Hey, Vlad here, and this is Darwin on Demand. Today, we're talking about boner pills and how men and women differ in the way they get sexually excited. So make sure you watch this video until the end, where I will give you the important takeaway message. Angina pectoris is a medical condition that causes severe chest pain due to the obstruction of the heart's blood vessels. Roughly 6.5 million Americans experience this angina, mostly in middle age. In 1996, researchers at Pfizer Kent facility in England developed a test compound known as 5-cyclic GMP phosphodiesterase inhibitor. These researchers, among other teams from big pharma companies, were hoping to find a treatment drug for angina pectoris and score millions of dollars of drug profit. Unfortunately for Pfizer, the test was a failure since the drug was not successful in unblocking the heart vessels of test subjects. But something interesting happened. The researchers noticed that even though the male's angina did not improve, many of them asked for more of the test drug. When the researchers asked why, the test subjects shyly explained that it was helping their marriage. When the researchers took a closer look at the effects of the drug, they noticed that it was facilitating blood flow after all. Just now where they expected. And that is how Viagra was born. Within days, Pfizer's share price doubled and the little blue pill has been a multi-billion dollar cash cow that transformed the sexual lives of millions of middle-aged men. Almost immediately, Pfizer and other big pharma company turned their attention to developing a pink Viagra and serve as the other half of the population by treating female sexual dysfunction. Vivas, a California-based biopharmaceutical company, started testing a Viagra-like drug known as a vasodilator that widens blood vessels and increases blood flow. They reasoned that increasing blood flow to the vagina would increase women's feeling of arousal just like it does for men. But after many trials and $10 million later, the drug failed to boost female desire. Similarly, Pfizer tested a compound that is believed to control vagina blood flow called vasoactive intestinal peptide, but it also failed to show any improvements in female libido. So despite the potentially colossal financial reward of creating a female Viagra, drug companies simply could not figure it out. But why? To answer that question, Let's first look at an experiment ran by one of the world's leader researchers on the neuropsychology of female desire, Dr. Meredith Chivers. In 2004, she conducted an ingenious experiment to find out what turns women on. She invited women to her lab to show them a variety of erotic photographs. Dr. Chivers measured the woman's arousal in two different ways. First, she asked them how they felt which is a measure of conscious psychological arousal. Second, to measure a woman's physical arousal, Dr. Chivers inserted a platystograph into their vagina, which is basically a device used to measure blood flow. The erotic photographs seen by this woman were depicting men exercising, women exercising, gay sex, lesbian sex, straight sex, and monkey sex. Mm -hmm. So which images do you think elicited physical arousal in women? All of them, yes, even the monkey porn. Women's vagina blood flow increased after viewing each erotic photograph. Okay, interesting enough, but which images elicit psychological arousal? In other words, which images caused the woman to say that they were turned on? Straight sex generated the greatest psychological arousal followed by lesbian sex. The, le the rest did not have much effect. In other words, for women, there is a disconnect between the conscious arousal of the mind and the unconscious or semi-conscious arousal of the body. When the exact same experiment was conducted with male subjects, there was no disassociation between the two types of arousal. If a man is physically turned on, he is also psychologically turned on. But it is safe to say that a woman's vagina lubrication is not a reliable predictor of what she is actually feeling. In fact, many women report lubrication and even orgasm during unwanted or coercive sex. A woman's body responds even as her mind rebels. 
In contrast, if a man is erect, you can make a pretty good guess of what's going on in his head. By the way, ladies, I would love to hear your take on this. Have you ever felt physically excited but not psychologically turned on? And under what circumstances? Please leave a comment and share your experience. So that is the profound difference in the brain software of men and women, which explains why the pharmaceutical industry failed to create a pink version of the blue pill. Blood flow is enough to turn men on. Women, on the other hand, have a more sophisticated process. Ironically, the drug with the greatest process of improving female libido resulted from a failed attempt from solving a different problem. Yes, just like the discovery of Viagra. A German drug maker was trying to develop a fast-acting antidepressant. Although the drug failed in first speed trials, researchers find that it resulted in a surging libido for female subjects. The interesting part is that this drug called flabicerin, fl flabacerin, anyway, this drug targets the part of the brain involved in the conscious processing of emotions. In other words, it operates by stimulating not the body, but the conscious mind. So what is the big takeaway? Well, it is important to realize that unlike the average male brain, the average female brain has a more elaborate process of getting turned on. Just because us guys are simple in our preferences, it does not mean that women are the same. Within seconds of meeting a woman, a guy will know whether or not he would enjoy sleeping with her. A woman, on the other hand, needs to take a bit more time to judge the guy's character, his personality, and how other people perceive him. While men's sexual desire is largely driven by their penis, a woman's sexual desire is largely dictated by her emotions. So guys, instead of focusing so much on flexing those muscles, it is perhaps wise to sharpen up your personality. If you find this video interesting, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe. If I reach 100 likes, I will make another video covering not just the reason why men and women differ in the way they become sexually excited, but I will also cover the things, or rather, the criteria that make a woman psychologically aroused. Until then, stay curious and thank you for joining me. Before I go, all the information in this video was taken from this book, A Billion Wicked Thoughts. I only cover a few pages from an ocean of incredibly fascinating and useful information. Click on the Amazon link in the description and buy it. The price of the book is dwarfed in comparison to the knowledge you will gain about human sexuality. Until next time.